We just went over Alabama and LSU with LSU shocking, uh, a knockout blow there, beating the Roman Army. And now we move down to the hedges, easily the most anticipated game since Tennessee hosted Alabama. But it did not go Tennessee's way like the last time did. Fellas, it was a beat down. The score does not indicate, just like our producer Trevor Valise said, the score does not indicate how how dominating the, the game was for Georgia. 27-13 was the final call, but it was nowhere near that. Georgia in all phases, Stetson Bennett, as Hack pointed out earlier, looked so poised. He was on the attack. He was on the run, uh, and he was making plays all over the field. Georgia bound up Hendon Hooker. Uh, ran a lot of different schemes. And really, um, our director, Rob Dowster, made that text. Why is Hooker off so much in this game? And before I throw it to you two, when I texted you guys about this, to me it was two factors. One was a Tennessee factor, one was a Georgia factor. First, uh -huh. Tennessee jumps on your head because they don't really do a ton of drops with the quarterback. So he's really trying to attack. He's attacking you striking vertically in that 10 to 15, 10 to 20 yard range, or they're going to play over the top. They don't really get the ball hitch up, move and climb and all that stuff. So they're ahead of the play. So as, as you're dropping, the ball's coming. Well, Georgia was able to throw a blanket on that. Then when they got pressure on him, he was either unable or unwilling to move and adjust around the pocket. They got a ton of sacks today. Uh, and then they forced a couple turnovers. So part of that was Tennessee. Part of that was Georgia. The end result, though, the number one team in the college football playoff got rolled by the number one team, according to the coaches poll in the AP. The White Walkers live on undefeated, untouched. Uh, Hack, I'm going to start with you. What was your biggest takeaway watching uh, the, the Bulldogs and the Vols go at it? Yeah, listen, like I said, um, been real quiet on this Georgia team, a lot less quiet than I was last year. And I actually took Tennessee in this game just because it was like the America sweetheart LSU rolling in. You think great story. You think they have a lot of stuff rolling. And and honestly, they're just the way they showed up, the way they played, the penalties, the the poise, the lights were a little too bright for them. And I don't think that as a program, they're quite there yet. I think Josh Heupel is going to get them there. And Hendon Hooker's done a damn good job of coming in and doing his stuff. But I, I just didn't think they were quite there yet. And they ran into a Georgia team that was poised, calm, collected, knew what they needed to do, and executed in all three phases today. They turned the football over when they needed to. I think one of the interceptions came in the end zone. Tennessee was very uncharacteristic with that. Hendon Hooker doesn't turn the football over. He turned the football over today. Georgia forced them to kick field goals slowed the offense down and made them play at their pace. And that was the unique part because it wasn't just a battle between Tennessee's offense, high powered offense and Georgia's defense. Georgia's offense was the number two ranked offense in the country heading into this game. I said this, Say I made again, this point. Hack. Say Georgia's offense was the number two ranked offense in the country behind Tennessee heading into this game. And Georgia was able to dictate on both sides of the football their pace of play, their style of play. They never let Tennessee hit a big shot and say, all right, here we go. Hey, we had the ball for 35 seconds. Now let's now let's start playing ping pong. Let's start going back and forth. They never let Tennessee get into that point. They made them be methodical moving the ball, which Tennessee has not had to do all year. Georgia, on the other hand, was able to get methodical, take advantage of uh, of some turnovers and some advantageous field positions, flip some big scores out of that. They had the quick turnover, had the ball on the plus 40 yard line, took the big shot through the out and up. There's a lot of things that Georgia did offensively to dictate the entire game and defensively. And it was really great complimentary football for my end. And it, that's the, that is why I made the comment headed way back in this show that Georgia might be the next dynasty because they're now showing this. They're showing the maturity of a program that's been through the trenches. They've grown They've won big games, and when the lights come on, they come out and play their best. And that's what you see out of the best teams week in, week out in college football, year in, year out in college football. And this was a prime example of it. And, um, you know, I felt bad not picking them 
afterwards. But like I said, I had to go with the sweetheart. And I, like I said, I think Tennessee's still in it. Part of the argument that I made, you know, they they beat both the teams in the West that showed up. And if they're going to go with it, whatever, Tennessee's got to continue to do what they got to do. But a big tip of the cap to Georgia. They just dictated the game on both sides of the football for four quarters. And it was really impressive to watch. And the rain started and they, you know, hell, yeah. it could have been worse. Um, but, you know, they they did a great job of, of just of, of commanding the football game. And it was very, very, it was just very impressive to watch. So, Builder, before I hand this to you, I want you to just look at this and then carry this ball here real quick. Hack did bring up a great point. He's going the dynasty route with Georgia. Uh-huh. That's fair because they were in the national championship with Jake sure. Fromm. That was a national championship team, and that was, what, four years ago. Yeah. And they were back last year, and they won it. Now they're back on the charge again. Uh-huh. And for people at home, don't forget now, Georgia – is two hours west of Clemson, and they're two hours east of Bama. Right, and they're sitting they, right down 60 there, sixty minutes away the, from Atlanta. Yeah, correct. But I'm saying you got two powers. It's not like USC all the way out here or Texas all the way down. Like they got plenty of room. They have no natural, you know, natural threat. Yeah, you just sure. recruit how you recruit and go about your business. Every time they walk into a high school, you're likely to walk past. Uh, a yeah. Bama coach or a Clemson coach, and you still got to find a way. Their quarterback is not a five-star guy. Stroud is. McCarthy is. Stroud for Ohio State. McCarthy for Michigan. Bryce, Bryce was. Young is for Alabama. DJ was. DJ, yeah. DJ, yeah. five-star. Caleb Williams. Stetson Bennett is a walk-on. Come out the and mud, they, man. And they tried to get rid of him. Transferred out. Went and played Juco for a, <laughs> couple, for a year Juco. or two and said, hey, I'm going to come back. <laughs> It wasn't even killing that. Juco came on yeah. back. And he's like, look, I'm your guy. Justin Fields decides to roll. Other guys decide to roll. Stetson Bennett's like, look, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go with me sometimes. So Face down right. another five star in JT Daniels. Correct. Yeah, he's exactly. running out of here, my all boy. these five stars <laughs> up out of there. And here's the killer part. He's got five stars sitting behind him. They sure. develop players, they recruit players. They are always game ready. They never beat themselves. That's something that's not often said about Georgia. Always sound play at football, and they do what's necessary. And then more times than not, they're blowing teams all the way back to, you know, Kazakhstan. All they're the a very time. physical football team. Very, too. very physical football. They're a very team. physical football team. So, so Felder, I'm handing the ball to you just to say what Hack is saying. A lot of that stuff is going to hold. Because that's just who you are. It's not like they got a big old monster at receiver, and when he leaves, so goes the firepower. Or when these two defensive tackles leave, so goes the front line. That's just not the case. This is starting to become DNA. Well, I I think that they have created, and again, we talk about it with Alabama, and it's this part of Alabama that I, I, I wonder what that looks like moving forward because they're missing some pieces. Um. We saw, like, again, I, I said it I said it to start the show. We had a lot of Alabama guys that look like bugs on the road. You're not supposed to be – if you're a defensive football player, you're not supposed to be on your back. That's the worst place for you to be. And then with Georgia, they're never on their back. They're moving forward. And when they tackle people, the people go backwards. And when I look at Georgia, the big thing that I see – um. And I do, I, I do think that they're 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 flipping it over. They're, you know, they're switching the game over to dynasty mode. I do think they are, and I think they're going to continue to be at the minimum contenders. There's nothing fake or pretend about them. This is a the, the team. They're for real. And listen, remember, let's not forget about this. Nolan Smith is out for the season, mm-hmm. and they still got the job done. Now I will say this: thirty-two, whoever you are, you need to put some gloves on. Because you do look, you you don't look great. But public service announcement from from field of twelve, uh, <laughs> fellas. Georgia came in three in the in the poll. Do they jump Ohio State and go to one for this win? I'll just leave it there first. I'll just no hack. You know who I'm talking about, and you know he got to put some gloves on. <laughs> that's that's a good comment, fellas. That's why I just giggled. It's a good, it's very solid, astute point. 
sir. <laughs> but no, I just I think that Georgia is probably going to move to number one. I think the question, honestly, I don't know if we're ready to move or not. But the question becomes, what happens with Ohio State? Well, they're next. Well, well they're, they're here, I, here's here's what I will say, George. I do think I do think I think the voters went with the similar thought process that I had. America's sure. team, sweetheart, Tennessee's rolling. Best they win of the Alabama, year. They beat yeah. LSU, yada, yada, yada. Um, but Georgia had done nothing up until this point to not sit there and say Georgia's still the right. team to beat. That's in fair. The, they, they, they really hadn't. Everyone had had, up until this point in the season, up until the rankings, everyone up there had had those scares. Yeah. Everyone had had them. Georgia had done nothing to deserve what happened. And Georgia came out and showed that, listen, he put everyone, they put everyone on, on, on alert. Yo, we won the national championship last year. Yeah. We right. lost however many guys to the draft. We're we not here to play. Back. Back. We're not, we're not fucking around. We're, we're yeah. still here we're and we're here back to play with you. We're not, we're not messing around, man. And you know, they they showed it. So yeah, I don't think there's I don't think there's really any argument for Georgia not jumping to no to number one. Uh we'll go into the into the rankings in a second. Quick answer. Tennessee should fall no lower than what, Felder? Alabama lost. Clemson lost. I'm gonna say five. Hack. Yeah, I'd say five or six. That's about what we got him yeah. at. Yeah. yeah, when we did our early straw poll here, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, all undefeated. Yeah, Tennessee is the best of the one losses with uh, Oregon, Clemson, and then you got two Alab- I mean, two SEC West teams with two losses right on their heels. Be interesting to see if USC can jump over some of these two loss SEC teams. Georgia twenty seven, Tennessee thirteen. And again, heavy weight to carry. Tennessee coming in college. Those misses, playoff, those misses one. from Tennessee got to loom large, man. Yeah, they really do. Those, and, uh, those, those overthrows, those misses. But he's got someone in his face, so he can't dial it in. He can't finish the throw. Like, wait, you're 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 a, one of the best quarterback coaches in the country. If you got someone in your face and you can't finish it off, like, what are uh, your odds of getting that one done? It's tough because you you either got to continue to try to create space or you like, you really, you got to make a decision. Either I'm going and I go and it's going to be what it's going to be, or I'm going to try to create space and get myself in a better scenario. Really even bigger than that. Tennessee had its coming out party against Alabama, but this is still new to you. New as a program, as a building, as a coaching staff, as a, as a locker room, these big time heavyweight fights with the ring walk and all this stuff. And the girls walking around with the card, Georgia does this stuff. Hack keeps saying it. They do this. Bama well, does this. Now Bama just fell on the wrong side of it, but Tennessee. Now you've got a couple of these under your belt. You'll get a few more. Now you got to work and sustain if you really want to stay up there. But Georgia popped themselves up, got up there, stayed up there, got comfortable up there, and they're going to be there for a yeah. while. And that's the thing. Even with Bama, though, George, is there, you're going to get got. In that stage, you're going to get yeah. got sometimes. Right. But Bama still gets theirs more than they get got. And I think Tennessee showing up is great for the conference. It's great for college football because now you have a you have a couple really competitive programs on both sides of the SEC. It's going to force a lot of decisions to be made when it comes to the college football playoff and then additionally top to bottom from the from the country's perspective when you got a tennessee georgia even a kentucky in the east starting to get real antsy they can beat you any on any old saturday and then now you have an lsu and a bama and an old miss maybe on the west that really want to get frisky like great man that's awesome for college football because it's going to make it more competitive and it's going to make the it's going to make the const- the contrast less clear where it was easily Georgia and Alabama in the SEC yeah. for Heck, the past I, three or four years. Heck, I got one more thing for you. This is the last thing, and then I want to. I do want to go to Ohio State, but here's the last thing I want to ask. How would you have handled that silent count? Because clearly 
Georgia with that pre-snap movement yeah. was affecting them. I don't know if they were yelling, barking, doing whatever on the field. They were. They 100% were. I mean, that's right. the, that's the new wave. Move! Right, right as right. the thing goes on. It exactly. freaks everyone out. Yeah. And but would you go to the the knee, the 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 big step count, which it's easier for defense to see. How do you hit the, the clap wasn't that the clap was not the way. Yeah, it's tough. How do you handle and it? I, I I don't know how you handle it. It comes down to discipline, it comes down to what you want to do. You could and, do the old point it. or knee. Yeah, it's seeing it correct, George. And, and that's, they've that's been the doing point. that for the last three years. Yeah, it's it's seeing it and being in that situation and how many games has to have Tennessee played in that's been that meaningful with that big of a crowd. Like the I, I said this in the last show, the last game that they played in in a away situation that was meaningful was at Pitt earlier yeah. in this year. Yeah, good and they point. they snuck out of that one. Yes, and and Pitt's yeah. not Pitt's not and, Athens, n- not even fucking close, <laughs> and. <laughs> You know, it, it's tough, man. It's something you have to have a bunch of veteran guys who've been there, done that, and who are all on the same page. And, yeah, to your point, whether it's the clap, whether it's the point and the look left, look right, or head bob and snap, whatever it may be, you just got to have guys on page. They were not on the same page. Well, here's the other thing, though, that, that threw this in there, and this is for you, you sports fans. Georgia wasn't messing around either with their defensive front. They were mugging guys, splitting backers out, like from a protection standpoint. And when you're playing in an offense like Tennessee does, which is very fast paced, go, go, go. There ain't much that you do from a protection standpoint. You slide left, slide right based on, you know, you may get an overload pressure this way or an overload pressure this way. Georgia was athletic enough to say, Hey, we're going to mug our backers up. We might bring them or Mm -hmm. we're going to jump up out of there and bring the guys on the edge. And those tackles were confused as shit. And those were the guys who were jumping because their Six eyes aren't inside. Yeah, yeah yes. their eyes, their eyes aren't inside False watching starts. the yeah. football. Their eyes are going like this. And then when you got noise, they're trying to figure out, is this guy coming? Do I got a pinch? Or is this guy coming? And do I got a pinch and then readjust? And that led to six Bingo. sacks with Hendon Hooker. There was a lot of shit Georgia did defensively that caused a lot of it's not even miscommunication. It's just discipline with are my eyes inside watching the ball and watching yeah. my center go, and then I know where I'm going. Right. Or am I really – I got no idea where I'm going because they've hit this here, same presentation. They've hit it inside where I had to pinch, and they've also bumped, and then I had to get my eyes back outside and get a guy coming off the edge from and it's so, six yards deep. And, and I got to so play in unnerving. space. It's un- unnerving to fun. be out there on an island, and you've got these werewolves coming off the edge. It's yeah. a yes. crowd. You're going through everything Hack just said. You're the furthest away from the snap count technically, and you the hell you we, want to get beat. We saw so that we saw wide down. receivers ten yards down the field before the ball was snapped because but they, they were don't like, have the same pressure though. Yeah, no, 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 no. Wide no, no, receivers I'm, are going forward. I'm you don't talking, have the same pressure. You're you're not, not responsible about the, for keeping somebody coming past you. I'm talking about the confusion. Yeah, the confusion. But again, because, I'm, I'm just I'm saying the pressure is bringing the confusion. Yes, outside. Yes. All yes. I got to do is just look in and see the ball, and then I can go do my thing. Sure. Inside those tackles. You got a job. Oh, you got a job. So You got way, a job. They, they, it's they, not, their you heads look like not, tops a couple times. I mean, exactly. their heads were spinning a couple times. But when I, when, I, when I look and I see the ball sitting on the ground and there's a wide receiver 10 yards down the field, I was like, oh, he's looking inside, and he's going off of the defensive line with that instant sh- that shift that they did. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah. oh, he must have snapped the ball. They're moving. I'm going. And then all but, of a sudden it's like, oh. But that's discipline, though, Felder. Because at is. the end of the it day, is. their it eyes, is. their eyes, if you're if you're a receiver, your eyes got to be on the on the football. Period. And there's no, there's it's no very clear that they were not looking at the football. They were looking right. at that defensive line. And right. Felder, uh, the, as a defensive coordinator, what they're trying to get there, they're one, they're trying to get a rhythm of your snap count. Yes. So if it's color number, yep. color number, then they're going to move. If it's a clap, if it's the, the head nod, if it's the step and then a beat, and it's all Correct. those things. After Absolutely. you've settled on all your rules and everybody's agreed on where they're going, now we get into the cadence and they make another change. You know, it's a, it's a dickum to some extent. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for rolling with us. Um, yeah, it's, it's field of it's 12. Felder, that's a great point. That's a great point. The whole thing was a great point. It's, so a, nightmare. 12. it's a nightmare. 
Look, we we got more for you guys because because we got to go through this. Yeah, we got to go. We got, happened we got in South minutes. Bend. What happened up there in Evanston, Illinois, with Ohio State, mm, oh. TCU? Could they stay undefeated? What is going on in College Station, and what is going on with SMU and Houston? We're gonna try to <laughs> jump through all this stuff. It's probably twenty touchdowns going on at SMU Houston right now, fellas. Keep going. It's like defense optional.